Well, hello. He's hello, looking everyone. at me. He's waiting for me to do the intro. Welcome to our <laughs> weekend in review. Boom. Intro music. All right. So uh, we are on week two of the Chosen series, which has been a super awesome series. I'm excited because yeah. our youth group is just a couple of weeks ahead doing the same series. So yeah. I've gotten a little bit of insight before you on all this, and it's been fun watching the different ideas that have come uh, just in the first two weeks, um, you know, as far awesome. as building the sermon around it. It's yeah. been really fun. So we're on week two of The Chosen, and we're and this one is uh, To Rest is what this one is called. So can you give us a brief, like, yeah, overview, a little summary of it? So the whole idea of The, of the Chosen um, session, anyway, was uh, entering God's rest, and they showed the traditional Shabbat or Sabbath meal that the Israelites would host in their homes. And Mary, who's just been set free from demonic oppression by Jesus, hosts uh, Shabbat in her home. And of course, Jesus shows up there. And what I, what I really like, again, a lot of this is, is interpretation. Like nowhere in the gospels does it talk about Mary hosting Shabbat and Jesus shows up. I mean, it'd be cool, but no, that's not in the gospels. And so again, it's really important to go and read the gospels. But what I like about the show is that it ties in a lot of things that um, could have been, and from what I can tell so far, it doesn't go against what the Bible says in any way. So, again, watch the show, but more importantly, read the Gospels, right? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, she's hosting this meal, and Jesus shows up, and the whole point was like, to enter true rest, Jesus needs to be there in your life. And you can have the fanciest meal and the nicest uh, silverware in the most beautiful home, but without Christ, there's nothing there. Right. You know, there's nothing important there. Amen. Yeah. It makes me think of like church too, you know, like like we can have fancy stuff and we can have the best worship team and yeah. the rock star preacher and, you know, all the nice gadgets. But man, if Jesus never enters the room through the Holy Spirit, like, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like the Pharisees, they, they had, they knew, they had all the knowledge, they had all sorts of stuff, but yeah. their, their hearts completely missed the target, right? Yeah. They missed God's heart in the whole thing. Um, they missed the fact that God loves people. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So, okay, so when they were at the dinner, which I think was a really good um, illustration of just like loving others and then having grace on each other because, so in this video, she, you know, she was mixing, you know, different traditional um, dinners or whatever, like Passover. She set a seat out for Elijah, but that was for Passover. And right. she kept constantly saying, I'm sorry if I'm wrong, show me. She was so worried about doing it right. And, and I, I love this. She was posed a question, and the line that she said was, here's what I can tell you. I was one way, and now I'm completely different. And the thing that happened in between was him. And this is when yeah. she was talking to Nicodemus. And so you kind of get that before going into this dinner, and you see this person who's completely transformed. And one of the things we talked about was that for some people, it's a really extreme change, and for some, it's, you know, it's subtle. Yeah, when we come to Christ. Yeah, right? when we yeah. come to Christ, like this. Yeah. And she went from, you know, everybody knew her as Lilith, and they knew her demon-filled self and, and all the sin that she was in, and then it was just this miraculous change. And it didn't necessarily mean that life got easier for her, um, but there was a huge change. She was in her right mind. Yeah. And yeah. Happy. And... But it, so, so one thing I want to point out is that change isn't always instant. You right. know, right? Our change isn't always instant. We have to it's grow. Nice. Um, and I know that I put on the I'm a bad Christian hat simply um, simply because I wasn't changed right away when I wanted to be. And that's, you know, obviously that's not a correct thinking. That's not right. I mean, that's not appropriate thinking by any means. But. We so often we read or we hear stories about these, you know, these miraculous things happening instantly. Yes. And then it's it, then we get discouraged when it doesn't happen like that for us, or we get yeah. discouraged when a prophetic word is spoken over the person next to you, but the word wasn't said directly to you, right? Right. Um, and then it kind of, sometimes, I mean, for me, it would leave me wondering, like, God, what's wrong with me? What? Why am I? Why am I not getting this? What am I doing wrong? Right. Um, so I just want to I bring this up just to say, like change isn't always instant and so just embrace that moment of growth embrace that time you're going to go through the valley of the shadow of death and so just lean on lean on christ through it anyway. yeah i like a lot of of what this lesson was about too is that as christians you know when we come to christ you know not only do we not necessarily change instantly 
but we're still going to go through hard times. Right. And but the difference is we have Jesus with us now. Yeah. You know. And I would much rather have Jesus with me through my hard times than just trying to figure it out myself. Yeah. Um, I, I just recently watched a, a, a sermon and um, the preacher was talking about uh, sin. He says, isn't it funny that as we become Christians, we seem to sin more and more and more. And it's not necessarily that we're sinning more, but it's that, you know, Recognize. we're recognizing that it is sin. And so we're filtering it out. And yeah. cause before we're kind of blind to our own sin. Yep. And as our relationship develops with Christ, you know, things are revealed to us. And so don't get discouraged in that. Because yes. that's really easy to get caught up in the, I'm a bad Christian, because we're not yes. instantly changed. Yes. Good. I just want to keep hammering on that. I know that's something I've struggled with. Right. And, you know, yep. really early on in my faith walk, I really struggle with it. And, you know, it's gotten a lot easier as I've come to this understanding. So along with this idea of being chosen, which the show talks about, a great verse is Romans 8.30, which says, And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he also gave them right standing with himself. So another version says, Those he called, he, or, those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. So that's a whole process. Like, So God calls you, he picks you, he chooses you. But in Christ, by our faith in Christ, before God, we have been in the spirit 100% justified. Like, if you were to die today, Mike, like the enemy would have accusations. Mike was this, Mike was that. But all God would say is, no, 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 all I see is Jesus. Amen. Because his blood covers you. We, are, we have been justified in Christ. Now there's a process though, like, okay, so we've been justified, but we're also being sanctified. Meaning we're becoming like Christ all the way up until we die. Yeah. And because none of us is going to be perfect at this side of heaven. So it's, it is like in our thinking, we have to not beat ourselves up so much because we need to remember, wow, we've been chosen. God picked me from before time began, yep. you know, and, and he justified me in Christ. Like I'm righteous before God, but I'm also in this process of sanctification where yep. God is working out some of these things that affect my daily life, that sin patterns or thought patterns or, or behavior patterns. Yep. And man, he is, I think, I think God is just so much more gracious than what we allow right. in our own thinking. Oh, for sure. Uh, and they always, in the Bible, you see quite often the illustration of like refined by fire and talks about like working metal. Well, you heat metal up to cook out the impurities, but that doesn't change the fact that in the beginning it was still iron, right? You still had iron imperfections yeah. and all and the iron was chosen, the iron went through the fire to be refined and cleaned, and it had to go through that process to be a nice, sturdy weapon. You know, so you gotta think about that, like you were chosen imperfections and all. You went through the fire with your imperfections, and you'll come out on the other end. And you're still chosen through the and whole process. And you're still process. chosen through the whole still process, chosen. yeah, straight yeah. up, yeah. yeah. And good. now, just because we follow Christ, we kind of already touched on this, it doesn't really mean that life becomes easy, or instantly easy, necessarily, right? It's not rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> you know, when I, I led a buddy to Christ in boot camp and my mom wrote me, it was the first time I ever heard that, you know, you make sure you tell him just because he's a Christian, it doesn't mean it's rainbows and unicorns now. And it was a kind of a revelation for me, like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> um, but to me, yeah. it makes the prospect of heaven that much greater. Like, I can't imagine how amazing it will be to live in the presence of God, free of the evil from this dark world. Yes. I, I really, I just, I can't. Almost can't fathom it. It's going to be next level. Oh heaven my gosh! Level. Yeah, heaven level, mind blowing level. Yeah. I think. Um, I'm stealing the show here, but I want to point out one more thing you said. But the sentiment we sometimes hear that people find it hard to believe that God is real if they're not feeling happy comes from the notion that God's job is to make life easy for His children. Okay, so I want to reference a book here, Fathered by God, uh, by John Eldridge. It's a wonderful read. And here he says this, there's an old African proverb that goes like this, I hear, I forget, I see, I remember, I do, I understand. It's one thing to be told that you have what it takes. It's another thing altogether to discover that you do through some trial brought up in an adventure or through some test that demands hard work. The experience is both a revelation and a kind of authoring and that it reveals to you what you're made of and it writes this lesson on your heart. So that's good. We got to go through stuff. That's the only way we'll learn. It's the only way we're going to grow. You know. Yeah, I, I agree. And it, 
It is really sad that in America, a form of Christian teaching popped up that basically taught God's, like once you become a Christian, like health, wealth, prosperity, you know, is the main thing. And it's yeah. just really not. Like it's, it's secondary. Like it, the main thing is the main thing is our heart is surrendered to Jesus. We're following him in obedience. And where that takes us is in God's hands. Like a lot of times when we live a life of obedience and we, we offer our lives with, and we, you know, by, by serving God and obeying basic good teaching on, on ethics and integrity and, um, you know, giving, being a generous person, often that does result in blessing coming our way because it's honoring God with our lives. And when we honor him, he honors us. But we have to be very careful not to get into the idea that because I am now a Christian, my life will be simple and my and everything will come my way. And, and then if it doesn't, well, maybe I'm not saved. Maybe uh, God isn't real. Maybe, you know, this whole thing isn't worth it. And it's like, that's just, it's twisted thinking. Mm. All right, so we had Psalm what? Psalm 73 you wanted to look at. <laughs> yeah, so in Psalm 73, I love, I really love this because I, I find myself in the psalmist's shoes so often. And we were just talking, Mike was saying how, how raw and beautiful the psalms are that way. And, and um, in Psalm 73, he starts off by saying, Truly God is good to Israel, to those who, whose hearts are pure. But as for me, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping and I was almost gone. He said, For I envied the proud. And when I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. They, they seem to live such painless lives. Their bodies are so healthy and strong. They don't have troubles like other people. I mean, it's, you can, if you allow yourself, your mind can go there and think, wow, is serving God worth it? Like everyone else seems so happy. Everyone else seems to be making it in life, all these things. And he got into this um, kind of a pity party and was just like, you know, God, how come all these people are blessed? And and then in verse 17, this is the real clincher. It says, Then I went into your sanctuary, O God, and I finally understood. And he goes, understood the destiny of the wicked, that, you know, he realized his heart was bitter, he was torn up, and, and he realized that, you know what, my perspective was off, and I was focused on this one thing about how everyone else was making it, and I wasn't and the wicked were seeming to thrive in the land. Where's your justice, God? And ultimately, it's when he entered into God's presence that things began to change in, in his perception. And I really think that's so important for us as followers of Christ. Like, we, we take our external circumstances sometimes and we're like, why is this happening? How can this be allowed, God? Why is why did my car break down again? Why is my kid acting out? Why is why does things stink at my job? And and we we um, we lose our focus. We we start to try to figure everything out in our own self, and we get all confused, and it's it's hard. But if we can find a way to turn things off, to get into that quiet place with God, maybe it's worship on Sunday. You know, yeah, right. Read that refocus time and just say, Lord, speak to me. It's when we enter his presence that our perspective changes. You know, I went into your sanctuary, God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. So in, in my own life, it, it's taken me a long time to develop, and, and I still freak out when I shouldn't and say things I shouldn't. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but, but yeah, but you know, um, the, the faster we can re recognize and just be like, God, I just need to hear you. I just need to slow down. I need to get in the word and let your words speak to me. And I need to hear your voice and let, let your spirit speak to my spirit. Like that makes all the difference. And when that happens, your thinking clears, your worries and fears begin to dissipate and you gain fresh perspective. So this whole sermon was about rest. I wanna encourage you wherever you're at today, if you've made it this far with us in the video, to just take some time and carve it out right now before God and just take some time and rest in his presence. Um, maybe you haven't been in the word for a while. Open open your Bible. Let yeah. God's words speak to you. Um, let him speak to your soul. The, yeah, verse 17, then I went into your sanctuary. It was mm. intentional. Yeah. 
you have to take that step. And so one of the things we just started doing in our home, because, you know, we get so busy and, and then our phones take so much of our, our focus. And now my son, he was two years old, he knows a handful of words, phone, phone, but he wants the phone. He gets mad when he can't have the phone. Well, he sees us playing it on all the time. So yeah. we've been intentional to make, you know, make family time and then make also time for Christ in our, our household. Putting the phone away is a good way to do that. I um, mean, get rid of those distractions. And sometimes we need to get rid of those distractions so we can quiet ourselves to hear the Lord. So be intentional with it. Then I went into your sanctuary. Mm, that's good. Be intentional. Good. With that, that's all we have for this week. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for Weekend in Review. Something like that. Have a good one.